This is the Warrior Kid Podcast, number nine, Ask Uncle Jake. And this podcast is based on the two Way of the Warrior Kid books. The first one, Wimpy to Warrior, The Navy Seal Way, and the second one called Mark's Mission. The books are about young Mark, who faces a lot of the same problems that kids everywhere face. But Mark gets help solving those problems from his uncle Jake, who was a Navy SEAL and who stays with Mark in the summertime. And this podcast is so that warrior kids out there can hear some more lessons from Uncle Jake and also get the chance to ask Uncle Jake some questions. So here we go. The first question is from... 10 year old Kara and she asks my dog died and I'm really sad how does Uncle Jake deal with sadness well I'm sorry to hear that Kara and when sad things happen I want to tell you first of all it's okay to be sad and it is normal to be sad if your dog dies and the best thing to do if you feel like crying is to cry let those tears out there's nothing wrong with that and then you want to remember all the things that you loved about your dog and how happy your dog made you and then what's good to do is write down that stuff try writing a letter to the dog and tell the dog about all the things you loved about the dog and all the things that you're gonna miss. And you're probably gonna cry when you write that letter. And that's okay. And then once you write it all down, and you've cried a bunch, it's time to move forward. Now this doesn't mean that you're gonna forget your dog. You're always gonna remember your dog. And sometimes you're still gonna get sad. But you also have to remember that no matter what, you can't bring the dog back. So you have to move forward. You have to go and be happy again, like your dog would want you to be. And over the time, as time goes by, that sadness will fade. And, and it's not bad that the sadness fades. It's not bad because you're still always going to remember how much you loved your dog. But you will feel less sad as time goes on. So I want you to know that it it will get better. Sometimes when something bad happens, people think it's going to be bad forever. But it won't be bad forever. You won't be sad forever. As time goes on, you'll feel better. And lastly, I want to say this, that your dog gave you one more gift. And that is as much as it hurts right now, dealing with this, And learning how to deal with this will make you a stronger and a better person. So even when something sad happens, there is something good that comes from it. And that's the last thing that your dog will give you. So I'm sorry about your dog, Kara. And I hope this helps. The next question is from a seven-year-old in Melbourne, Australia named Reese or Rice. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. And the question was, how should I stand up for myself when in basketball at school, they don't pass me the ball or don't let me play even when it's my own ball? (sighs) All right. So what you do in situations like that is, first of all, do the best you can. When I was a kid, I wasn't a very good basketball player either. I couldn't shoot the ball very well, and I was pretty short. So what I did was, I did the best I possibly could when I was on defense. When you're on defense, when you're, that's when you're on the team that doesn't have the ball. I would do something called hustle. And what that means is I would work really, really hard, even when I didn't have the ball. I would defend, and I would try and steal the ball from the other team, and I would run to get open so someone could pass to me if my team did have the ball. And if no one passed it to me, I would hustle to another spot. And I would just work hard all the time when we were playing. So that's number one. Number two is practice. Practice all the time. When you aren't at school, dribble the ball all the time. 
practice in the driveway and in the back alley and go to the court every chance you get and shoot bas- baskets. And when you get tired of practicing, practice some more and then some more. And pretty soon, you'll get good enough to where the other kids will pass you the ball and you will have a lot of fun. But it all starts with hard practice, hustle, and hard work. And guess what? You can apply that to anything in your life. Good luck with that. The next question comes from Rumi, who's a nine-year-old warrior kid. And the question is, I can't use my left arm for pull-ups because it's formed a little differently than my right arm. How can I get strong enough to do a one-armed pull-up? Thanks, Uncle Jake. Okay, Rumi. It's a good question. First of all, one-armed pull-ups are super hard to do. But if you train super hard, you might get to a point where you can do them. Now, if you remember, in the first Warrior Kid book, Mark couldn't do any pull-ups at all either. And I'm going to read a little bit of that. So, Uncle Jake had just put the pull-up bar into the garage for Mark to use. And this is the first day that Mark's in there and he's really scared because he knows he can't do a pull-up. And as Uncle Jake says, we're going to the book, step on up and let's see what you've got. It seemed like a year passed as I stepped up onto the box and slowly reached toward the pull-up bar. I grabbed a hold of it. It was much thicker than the pull-up bar at school, which made it even harder to hold on to. And then, just like the last day of school, I pulled as hard as I could, but nothing happened. I tried again and even grunted a little to try and prove to Uncle Jake that I was really trying. But the grunting didn't do much. Uncle Jake stood there and watched. After a few more seconds, I lost my grip and slipped off the bar. Sorry, Uncle Jake, I told him, embarrassed at my strength. Or should I say, my complete lack of strength. Don't be sorry, he replied. Sorry won't get you stronger. Now here's what we are going to do. He took another box he had made, which was smaller than the first one, and put it under the bar. Step up on this box, grab the bar, then jump up until your chin is over the bar. Then I want you to hold yourself up as long as you can. And when you can't hold yourself up there any longer, come down as slowly as you possibly can. I followed his instructions. I grabbed the bar, jumped up, I got my chin over the bar, I held myself up for a few seconds, and then when I couldn't stay up any longer, I came down as slowly as I could. As soon as I got to the bottom and my feet touched the box, Uncle Jake sounded off, now do it again. I did. The next time, my muscles were already tired, so I couldn't hold myself up as long, and I came down faster. Again, Uncle Jake yelled again. I did it again, and again, and again. Finally, when I could barely get myself up over the bar and basically dropped right down again, Uncle Jake said, okay, now take a break. When I joined the Navy, I could barely do seven pull-ups. But the Navy gave me a program, and I stuck with it. I still do it today. Now I can do about 50 of them pretty easily. You want to know how you get good at pull-ups, Uncle Jake said? How, I asked. By doing pull-ups. So, that's the same thing you're going to have to do, Rumi. Now, since you're only working with one arm, you might have to put your feet on something to really push yourself up at first, and that's fine. Just use your arm as much as you possibly can, and keep working to lower yourself down as slowly as you can. And once you can lower yourself down slowly, then start trying to pull yourself up. You probably won't be able to at first. And that's when you're gonna use your feet, put your feet on something so that you can use your legs to push yourself up, and that's fine. But try to use your arm as much as you can and don't use your legs too much. And then as days go by and weeks go by and months, this is gonna take a while, keep using your feet and your legs less and less to push yourself up over the bar. And then keep doing the exercise of letting yourself come down slowly. And another good thing to do is what Mark did in the book is get yourself up there and hold yourself up with your chin over the bar as long as you can and come down as slowly as you can. 
and keep working and keep using your feet as you le- and your legs, but keep using them less and less and less until eventually you can do the pull up with one arm. It might take a while, but you can get there. Good luck with that. Hard work will pay off. All right, the next one is from Braden, who's a seven year old warrior kid from Ohio and is having some difficulty learning to read. He wants to know if I had any difficulty in school and how he can keep from getting frustrated when his homework is hard. So, Braden, you should know that most kids have some trouble in school at something. Now, there's some kids that are super smart and they don't ever have trouble with anything at school, but I wasn't one of those kids. I had trouble with different things at different times. I was never a good speller. Sometimes I didn't understand the math. School is not easy and school is not supposed to be easy. Just like a workout isn't supposed to be easy, uh, school is supposed to challenge your brain so that your brain gets stronger. And just like a workout takes hard work, school takes hard work. And sometimes that can be frustrating, especially if you don't feel like you're getting better. But you are getting better. You're learning, you're stretching your brain, you're challenging your brain. Now if, it gets, if you get frustrated, then take a break. Go outside, breathe some fresh air, do some burpees or some pull-ups or some exercise to get some of that frustration out of your system. Maybe tilt your head back and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and force yourself to smile and then keep doing the work. And another important part of this is don't be shy or don't be embarrassed to ask questions. Ask for help. Ask your teachers or your parents or even your friends if there's something that you don't understand. Warrior Kid Code is written about this and number two of the Warrior Kid Code says the warrior kid studies to learn and gain knowledge and asks questions if he doesn't understand. The reason that that's in there is because kids get embarrassed to ask questions. They feel like they're dumb if they ask a question. Well, don't feel dumb. Don't be embarrassed. When I got older and I went to college, I would sit in the front row of every class and the second I didn't understand something that the teacher was saying, I would raise my hand straight in the air and I'd say, I don't understand that. Can you please explain it again? Learning is hard. Learning takes practice and you also sometimes need help. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Keep working hard, keep studying, and you will improve. Okay, the next is actually two questions which were both about food. The first one is from Kanan, who's 10 years old, who asks, is cheese a strong food or a weak food? And the second question is from Eric, a seven-year-old warrior kid who wants to know if bagels are healthy, and if not, what breakfast should Eric eat? Well, I would say cheese is pretty healthy. It comes from milk and doesn't get too much processing, meaning people don't have to change it too much to make it into cheese. So I would say cheese is a strong food. But as for bagels, they're not really a strong food. Think about everything that people have to do to make a bagel. It's a lot of processing. Now I know they taste good, but they also make your body react in kind of a bad way from having too much of something called carbohydrates, which is like sugar in your body. So you've gotta be very careful with the bagels. Instead of bagels for breakfast, I would recommend eggs. They taste good and they are absolutely great for you and you can hang out with Canaan and put some cheese with those eggs. And if you really want something sweet, try some blueberries. They are great tasting and they are good for you. And the last question is from Mackenzie, who's eight, and Jacob, who's five, and they have two questions. Uncle Jake, we love playing sports and being part of teams. What was it like being part of the SEAL teams And do you have any advice on how to be a great team player? Well, 
being in the SEAL teams was great. Most of my teammates were awesome guys who were great to be around, and they were hard workers, and they were also hilarious and always had ways to make me laugh. And also they were serious when there was work to be done. And most important, they always took care of me. No matter what was happening, I could count on my SEAL teammates to take care of me. We also had a very clear mission, which was to protect our country from bad guys. So we knew that we were doing something good for our country and for our own families. So being in the SEAL teams was an unbelievably great experience for me. Now, as far as advice on how to be a great team member, here's my answer. And it's a pretty simple answer. Always make sure that you put the team before yourself. That means instead of taking care of yourself first, take care of the team. In the SEAL teams, we would take the hard job ourselves so someone else didn't have to do it. We would also give our teammates credit for doing a good job instead of taking the credit ourselves and saying, I did a great job. No, instead we would say, no, my teammate did a great job. We would always make sure that everyone on the team was taken care of before we would take care of ourselves. So that's the most important thing. Take care of your teammates before you take care of yourself. And when everyone on the team puts the team first, and puts each other first, puts each other ahead of themselves instead of only taking care of themselves, that is when you will have an unstoppable team and that is how you become a great team member. And that is all we have for the Warrior Kid podcast this time. And if you wanna get one of the Warrior Kid books, You can get them at warriorkid.com. And if you want a Warrior Kid t-shirt or jujitsu rash guard, you can get them from jockostore.com. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading the books. Now go out there, train hard, study hard, work hard, get after it, and be a Warrior Kid.